This is Zambia, this is nation. Yeah, yeah. Give us, you will give us. <laughs> this is Zambia, the home of copper. And welcome to this fearless debate. Uh, Blunt Talk live on Movie TV from Zambia, is capital city, Lusaka. And remember, the program is also live on our official Facebook page, which is Ask a Movie. Others are watching us on uh, channel 104 on the Top Star Decoder. Sitting in for Kelvin Chifokolo. My name is uh, Innocent Piri. You can simply call me IP. Remember, of course, we're remaining with the four days before the year 2020 comes to an end. Now remember that, again, uh, this year has been described as one of the most difficult a uh, year to most Zambians. A lot of happened, and of course, just uh, two days ago, we had the issue of uh, the uh, shooting of two people that died, of course, and of course, we've been told that uh, investigations are under, underway. And of course, today was the last day, actually, that Zambians were promised, actually, or should I say the president, uh, gave Inspector General of Police a five-day ultimatum in which he should be able to produce that report. And I should make mention that Zambians are anxious, waiting. Allow me to now take you to the issue we have gathered, we have assembled here, and I've got my two intelligent uh, young men that have come to add their voice in terms of the 2020 governance review. You can also send us your message in terms of uh, how the 2020 has been uh, from your side. So follow us. Allow me to first of all introduce my guest. Uh, of course, uh, I'll begin with uh, on my right uh, direction. Uh, his name is Omiya Hankanga, coming from the United Party for National Development, UPND. Mr. Hankanga, welcome to Blunt Talk. Good evening, Innocent, and good evening to the viewers out there. Fantastic. All right, let's uh, go to the, your, your, your neighbor, uh, who happens to be uh, Sylvester Chavala. And this is coming from uh, the National Restoration Party, NAREP, and he is Lusaka District Chairperson. Mr. Chavala, good evening, and welcome to Blunt Talk. Good evening, uh, Mr. President, and uh, good evening, viewers out there. Fantastic. And uh, I might mention that also, good evening to all of you Zambians that are watching us on Movie TV Channel 1 and uh, Top Star Decoder Channel 104 and also our Facebook page, which is Ask Movie. My name is uh, Innocent Piri once again, IP in short. Let's begin on this direction. I'll start with uh, the UPND uh, representative in terms of, I'll give you under a minute, and uh, just to give you to give us your review of basically maybe your own judgment on how 2020 has been. And remember that should come with a justification to whatever answer you are going to give to me. So I'll give you three minutes. I think 2020 has not existed mm. to us. Because if you look at what has currently happened in our country, it's a sad story of affair. Mm. And uh, you look at uh, from January up to date, I think our country has gone through quite a lot and the citizens have suffered quite a lot. And um, this has been a year that many people have actually suffered in the history of Zambia in terms of it being politically, it being economically, it being socially, it being spiritually. 2020 has really affected Zambians badly. Because if you look at the events that have taken place starting from January, we had the issue of gassing, we've had the issue of this coronavirus, we've had this police brutality that has been taking place. So basically 2020 has not been a good year politically and almost all the aspects of, uh, of life for Zambians. Right. You still have uh, um, a minute plus. I still have a minute. You told me a minute. I said uh, three minutes. <laughs> three minutes. Sure. Yeah. So Basically, 2020 has been a year of sorrow on part of uh, politically, if you look at what has transpired. Let's take, for instance, from January up to around March, April, we had the issue of gassing, where Zambians suffered, Zambians feared for their own lives, where a lot of people actually were killed 
which we are talking about 49, 48 people that were killed during this gassing period. And after that, we've had this coronavirus that has actually paralyzed much of our economy. Mm -hmm. And basically, these have been, it has not, this corona has not just affected us economically, but it has also affected us politically. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at, we are not able to gather in large numbers for us to speak to the people or to, to send our messages out there. Mm -hmm. This has really affected us. And again, you find that at the same time, this same coronavirus, it's like it's an oppositional virus mm -hmm. where it has really much affected opposition and where we have seen an increase in the abuse of power by, 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 by the current regime, which is the Patriotic Front, mm -hmm. where we've seen where them, they are able to have large gatherings, but when it comes to opposition, it has been a sad story of affair. So these are some of the events that have really taken place during this year. We've seen an issue where two, we've, we, we've lost two of men, of which in Zambia we're saying Zambia is a she, and two men have gone. So meaning that two ladies have lost two men due to, due to police brutality. This is a shame. And we've seen, we've had an event where the president has requested for, 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 is it a report from the Inspector General of Police where they're saying he's given them how many days, is it two days, three days for them to give him a report? When 49 lives were lost, there was no report that has actually come about. 49 lives were lost at the hands of the gassers. And Fantastic. Let's go to Mr. Chawala. Um, Mr. Ankanga has mentioned a lot of issues. He brought in the issue of COVID-19. He also brought in the issue of uh, police brutality, uh, the gassing, and uh, also he briefly talked about the uh, rule of law. Let's hear from the Nare uh, perspective uh, how the 20, uh, 2020 year has been from the side. We've got three minutes. Yeah, I think um, 2020 hasn't been a good year. Hmm. And I would want to just borrow uh, some words from someone. I was just reading an article on Facebook. Uh, where someone said, if I was asked to skip any year in my life, and uh, that person wrote to say, I was going to skip 2020. Mm. And uh, for sure, uh, politically, religiously, as well as um, in the life of we, the youths, I think this year has been a very bad year. Mm. I believe you would agree with me that um, this year we have seen uh, unemployment you know, increasing from where it was, becoming worse than it has never been in the history of this country. Mm. And, um, and we, we have seen uh, also, you know, crime increasing uh, this year, you know, uh, because if at all we were asked to go and check, you know, uh, about the numbers in the police stations or in the prison, mm. you'd agree with me that um, the numbers have increased. So if we look at all sectors of life, of course, um, you know, from Korela, that was 2019 when we had Korela. Yeah. And uh, from Korela, we got into gassing as well as uh, a lot of things affecting us. Uh, the rains, uh, last year we never had uh, good rains. And uh, just coming from that, uh, this year also uh, we had COVID-19 that affected us uh, massively. And uh, if you look at... Um, uh, when COVID-19 came in, churches were affected. So we affected even uh, the, the way we were worshipping. Even today, you know, uh, just few selected people are chosen to be able to, to, to worship. And that has affected and uh, it has made also crime to increase because uh, we are a Christian nation. And, you know, if we are taken away from gathering together and learning from one another, uh, that uh, really affected us in this country. So a lot of things have affected us, especially as youths and mothers out there. You can agree with me that things haven't been going so well politically. And we have seen, like uh, Michael Rigg had, uh, you know, put it um, on the ground, that uh, we just lost um, our two colleagues, uh, uh, you know, a few days ago. And uh, that shows that uh, somewhere uh, things are not okay. So... Um, of course, we are looking forward uh, to in, in having a better year in 2021 like than uh, the one we had in 2020. So I think uh, 2020 for me and for NAREP, it hasn't been a good year because uh, we had also uh, little time, uh, you know, to be able to speak to the people 
and as well as, uh, you know, just also to be given a fair, you know, playground where we can be able to bring up uh, national issues. But of course, to our friends, uh, the ones that are in, in, in the government today, uh, with them, everything is, is okay because uh, it's, business they, they, it's, it's business as usual. They are not seeing anything. Yeah. But of course, uh, for our party and for Zambia at large, I think uh, 2020 has not been a good year. And we are looking forward in having a better year that um, would bring uh, or will come to a time where youth will get back to work and where we'll see a, a lot of youths uh, getting back to school because a, a lot of them dropped out of school. Mm -hmm. And we want to see, uh, uh, wishing to, to see a year where we'll have our mothers uh, trying to sell what they need to sell in a good environment. Because right. 2020, we haven't seen that. You know, every time prices are increasing on daily basis. Thank you so much, Mr. Chavala. Your three minutes is up. And I have to make mention to all the viewers watching us that uh, we were supposed to have uh, a member from the Patriotic Front by the name of, my name of uh, Max Chongu, but I should make mention that that was uh, due to maybe miscommunication from our side as an institution, and therefore we apologize because we would have loved him to be here and uh, rebuttal to all these allegations that are being laid on the table. But above all, we'll be able to chip in the questions, and uh, of course, uh, through your help as the viewers, we'll be able to drive the program uh, smoothly. Thank you so much once again. Uh, comrades, let me uh, move on again. I'll begin with Mr. Ankanga once again. You did mention something very profound here, that uh, 2020 has not been okay. It's been a very sad affair according to your understanding. Uh, you brought in one critical component here of uh, the issue to deal with the police brutality. And I want you to, to be honest as you uh, speak to the Zambian people. What do you mean when you say police brutality here? Because for me, and uh, some people watching us, this could sound like a blank statement. What are you talking about here when you say police brutality? Innocent. Every Zambian has heard. Hmm. Every Zambian has seen it. That we are actually going into a detector regime. Hmm. Especially that we are heading towards 2021, towards the election. We have seen an increase where the police have been empowered hmm. with ammunition, a tirad, that is supposed to be handled by the Zambia Army or the Zambia Air Force or any defense system, not the police. We have seen an increase in the way the police in Zambia today is handling the issue to do with the Public Order Act, especially when it comes to opposition. We have seen the way how the police has been handling the issue of public gatherings, especially when it comes to the opposition. But when it comes to the Patriotic Fund government, the, the police takes a blind ear. It takes a blind eye because probably they are the ones in power. We have seen how many times have you heard the police that have shot dead and really PF Kada? Nowhere. How many times have you heard that an opposition Kada has been gunned down by the police? The numbers are there. This, this is reality that is there, innocent. So we are looking at, we are not looking at a police service anymore. We are looking at the police force. These guys have become a force where they want the citizens. We are no longer working with the police. They are now a force where they want us to be afraid of them. We have seen an infiltration of the police by the political cadres that have taken over. There's no more professionalism in the police service. There's no more professionalism. It being at a community level, it being at the highest rank order of the police. We have seen it. Mm. And this is a sad story because if you look at how many gatherings, you saw it for yourself where young people wanted to have a peaceful demonstration. But the police said no. They ended up having, because they are using that again, they are using the Public Order Act which states in Cap 929 of the clause of Zambia, it states that the police shall be notified. Shall be notified. The police does not have a mandate to stop any public gathering as long as they are notified. But when it comes to the opposition, they do not have manpower. When it comes to the opposition, we do not have fuel. But 
We have seen an increase of patriotic fund cadres who have, they just wake up, my brother. Look at what has happened today. Dr. Is it Shitalu uh, Chirufia? Was appearing in court. You saw what happened? The courts had to be closed prematurely because the cadres were making unnecessary noise. Why didn't Kanganja send police there? Why didn't Kanganja send police to go and shoot one of those guys for unruly behavior? But when it comes to the opposition, which is us, the United Party for National Development, we are deviants. We have got this menace. We are, we are menaces of society. When it comes to the patriotic fund, they are holy cadres. Because probably their stay in office as police commissioners, their stay in office as police senior officers is at the mess of those cadres. But because we are in opposition and they do not gain anything from us, it's to kill us. This is why we lost, we've lost the young girl called Kabulo. We lost her. We've now lost, we lost Vespers in the hands of the police. We've now lost this young man, Joseph. And all these young people have family, men and women. Are you telling me that the police will look after these, they're going to look after these children for these young people? Or they're going to take care of the families of these young people? No. Enough is enough. If anyone from the police is watching right now, enough is enough. Zambians have cried enough. Us in the United Party for National Development, we've cried enough. Can we bring back sanity in the police service? We should not oppress the opposition by using the Public Order Act if they cannot interpret what the public order... This is why we have the, the, we have the lawyers that can help the police to interpret the Public Order Act. Because if you look at the peaceful procession that we had, it was just a solidarity. If a simple Minister of Health, simple Minister of Health, who is just an MP, can have solidarity from cadres, what will stop a political president like Haka in the to have cadre supporters to show him solidarity? He is the president of a political party. He is a president. The police should learn to be professional. Because one thing they should understand is that Governments go. Governments come in. There is life for each and every political party. And each political party has got its lifespan. Right. Tomorrow, governments will change. What will happen to Kanganja? What legacy does Kanganja want to leave when he leaves that office as the Inspector General of Police? Fantastic. Let's go to the next speaker uh, by the name of uh, Sylvester Chavala. They are coming from Manarep. Narep, you did mention something um, of course, uh, you know, that interests many Zambians that are listening to you and watching you and also me as the moderator this evening, where you mentioned that if you look at 20, uh, uh, 2020 really has been terrible because the levels of unemployment has increased, all right? You went further again to make mention that uh, in 2019, we've had issues to deal with the cholera and, 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 and the likes, you know? But uh, I, I, I'll just make one correction here to say, in 2019, we never had the, any single case of cholera as a country. Are you aware of that? Yeah, I, I think... Um, 2019. If I remember very well, it yeah. was, we were coming from 2018, 2019. So I want us to make it clear. Exactly. Said, you remember that 2019, we never had any case or single case of cholera. Mm -hmm. You aware? Yeah. Thank you so much. So are you able to retract that? For uh, misleading Zambia. <laughs> uh, not really misleading Zambians. Hmm. Uh, the reason why I brought the issue of cholera. I, 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 I want us to move. Yeah, because uh, yes. it, it came from 2018 to 2019. Yes, if so the remember cholera when, uh, outbreak or pandemic who only had it in 2018, 2018. not 2019. Okay. So retract that. I retract. Thank you so much. Let's go to the issue of unemployment in 2020. Uh, 20, uh, 20. Mm -hmm. When you say the levels have increased, uh, to unprecedented levels. Mm. What do you mean in terms of statistics to be correct here? From what percentage to what percentage? Um, I may not have statistics right now. Yeah. But you'll bear witness with me that we have a lot of youths, even husbands, seated right now in their homes. Mm. 
okay, because they do not have a job. Mm. And you will agree with me that uh, for sure, if we were to go every after maybe uh, 10 houses, mm. you will find there is a, someone who is a, a graduate and they don't have a job. Mm. Because uh, the PF government promised us mm. to offer the youth of this country mm. jobs, and which only uh, a few have been offered those mm. jobs. Okay, because I remember in 2016, mm. our current president uh, offered us as Zambian youths to say, of course, he will give us about um, 50,000 uh, 50, mm. jobs. But if we mm. look at what, uh, what, what has been offered today, mm. you'll bear witness with me that uh, we have a lot of youths that have even gone to an extent of engaging themselves in illicit activities. Mm because they do not have what to do. They do not have anything to motivate them. Mm. And you'll agree with me, uh, Mr. Presenter, that for sure the levels of unemployment in this country are high and are increasing, mm. especially now that we even have COVID. Uh, as you can bear witness, all Zambians out there, that even now the COVID that has come back now, it is more powerful than, 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 than the one we had before. And uh, already we, 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 we are hearing that, uh, you know, uh, borders are, w will be closing soon. Mm. So now, I wonder, I, I am still wondering because we still had the levels of unemployment. I wonder if at all, with this COVID that has come back, mm. how the levels of unemployment in this country will be. Mm. It makes me wonder. So I, I think I can answer it in, in, in that way. Fantastic. Uh, I brought in this question because we are dealing with uh, not rhetorics here. Remember that Zambians are watching us. Yes. I should I say the world is watching us right mm -hmm. now. So mm -hmm. when we begin to um, issue certain statements, we should be very careful, not blank statements. Mm -hmm. This is not a political event, but these are um, national like issues. No so issue. when we say unemployment has increased uh, to... Have we should be able to pull out the figures. It has actually increased from 34% to 86. Uh, yes. That is tw from 20? This, that's from 2018. 18. Yeah. 2018, it was at 34%. 2020, mm. it has moved to 86%. That's according to who? The central statistics. Who has compared that? According to the central statistics. Fantastic. Report. Now we can move on, comrades. Yeah. All right. Uh, the other issue I want to get from my uh, UPND, uh, you did mention uh, the issue, or lamented the issue about the issue of... Uh, uh, Public Order Act, which you feel that is being used to suppress maybe your members and uh, other Zambians. I might mention that these are the concerns that have come from different stakeholders, not only you from the UPND, nor from NAREP alone, but different civil rights activists have complained about it, and also different citizens of this country have complained about this issue. But I come back to you as the UPND because this is a political party with the representation in parliament in terms of uh, the lawmakers. What are you doing to ensure that the issue that you are talking about here, the Public Order Act really, is worked on? Because at least you've got that power to make changes to the Public Order Act. What, what role have you played really, apart from complaining each time? I'll give you, a, I'll give you an example. Hmm. Before the president, mm. uh, late president Michael Chilufiasata, came into power. Mm. He said, when I get into power, I'll abolish the Public Order Act mm. because it's a colonial document. Mm. But when he actually came into power, he mm. did realize, say, uh oh, oh. And this is what is currently happening. The Public Order Act is working for the current government because it has been used to suppress, to mm. oppress the opposition in our country today, mm. where no activities are taking place anywhere. I'll give you an example. You're right. We have, the, we have members of parliament. Mm. During the conference that was there that was, that was supposed to have uh, brought in the, the Buten, mm. are you aware that the Public Order Act was one of the things that was supposed to have been tabled in Butan. This is why up to that, under the United Party for National Development, we said the Butan will be a draconian law. 
Because the only laws they wanted to enact were those that were favoring the patriotic front government, mm. not those that were working in favor of the opposition. Mm. The Public Order Act has been in Parliament, has, it's, it's, a, it's a bill that has to be tabled seriously. But because the patriotic front MPs know, the government knows that they, have, they are the majority in Parliament, they can't allow. They can't allow Parliament to table the issue of Public Order Act because it favors them. Mm. Look at countrywide. If you watch ZNBC, the so-called dead NBC, if you watch dead NBC every day, you will realize that... Uh, allow me to just correct you, Mr. Hankanga. That's yes, for, for me here, let's ensure that we don't demonize anything. Okay. Let's call if you watch, a spade as it is. If you watch if ZNBC. You issues, let's handle them separately. Okay. But for now, if it's ZNBC, yes. call it as such. Okay. Yes. If you watch ZNBC, mm. you will realize that the patriotic fund government has gone full throttle in terms of campaigns. They are everywhere. Regardless of the coronavirus that is taking place, they are everywhere. My president, mm. Haka in the Hichlema, can't even attend a church service without being followed mm. by police. He can't even leave his own home to go into a shopping mall without being followed by the police. He has to notify the police that even if you choke up on a new man, friend, don't tell the man among a moment, they'll be you'll be told soon. I'm the moment they will because the moment they will be called. But their leaders they are able to gather in thousands. It's mm. very easy. They're using the Public Order Act to show that they are still popular. And to show the opposition that the opposition in Zambia does not exist. This is why they're using it to oppress us. Because they want to show Zambians that the United Party for National Development, it being NAREP, do not exist. Mm. This is why if you give a notification who doesn't know that the economy of Zambia is bad? Who doesn't know that bread, the price of bread has increased? Who doesn't know that the price of cooking oil has increased? If Zambians today want to protest and say, please, can we have a price control of our commodities? The police will say, there is corona. The police will say, we do not have manpower. But they have the manpower to go and kill innocent Zambians out there. They have that power. So are you telling me that the Public Order Act is here to work against us Zambians? Because we as United Party for National Development is not an international party. It's a Zambian political party which abides by the rules of this country. The United Party for National Development is a Zambian party that plays its game of politics by the rules according to the constitution of Zambia. But what we are seeing by our friends from the time the patriotic fund government came into power is that they want to ensure that Zambia is taken aback into a one-party state by using the Public Order Act. And foolishly, the police have been at the helm, have been at the helm to spread this Public Order Act in order to spearhead the agenda of the Patriotic Fund government. The people that have been put in place, mm. the IG Kanganja himself, he has forgotten that he is sworn in into that office constitutionally, not to represent an individual, it being the President of Zambia, it being the Minister of Home Affairs. He is there to represent, to protect the constitution of this country. But is that what is happening? You've seen the number amount of threats that we are being given every day, us in the opposition. You have seen how the patriotic front guarders are attacking with impunity, non-patriotic front guarders attacking citizens with impunity without the police making an arrest. Is that the kind of Zambia that would want us to see? Is that Someone the listening kind to you, Mr. Nkanga, would argue with you that uh, really it makes or oh, it's pointless for you to stand on that pulpit and begin to complain when your members really in parliament maybe they have done little to uh, refine the public order act you are complaining about. You've just mentioned something very important on your own to say 
there was a time when the country wanted to refine the, the constitution of Zambia. And, and all issues, political parties came and together. And one of the issues was the Public Order Act. All right? And for us, for me, I want to listen to you, and the people of Zambia want to listen to you, what role are you playing, or did you play, or have you attempted to make changes to this constitution or to the public order that you are complaining about? You've given an example on your own to say, in prior to 2011, Michael Sata did, of course, promise the people of Zambia that he was going to get rid of this, uh, uh, you know, okay, law which we have today. All right. But the question is, we have got are you aware, sure, innocent? 53, are you aware? 53 members of parliament today. What are you doing? And are you order, aware? It is your members that really shown that cowardice, for lack of better words, uh, during the constitution uh, refinement process by running away, for example. Are you aware of innocent? Ways again. Are you Is aware? That, way that, that, that you want to, 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 to no, govern no, no, the country. No, no. Innocent. You know, are you aware that in 2018... You mentioned something very important. Let me finish my question. You fin mentioned something very important here to say the Bill 10 was all about those in power and not those in opposition. If you ask me, that statement is qu quite alarming because should the constitution be about a political party in power or a political party in the opposition or should it be about the people of zambia the constitution is about the people of zambia right we have this is why there are people that are mandated to uphold the constitution mm. you and i are also mandated mm. to uphold the constitution of zambia mm. but there are people like i'll give an example the the inspector general of police through Zambia police, they are mandated to ensure that in Zambia there is law and order. And the Public Order Act is one of the rules that the, pub the police will use in order to bring public sanity in our communities, in our country. But if you look at, we are not crying as the United Party for National Development, but we are complaining. We are complaining. The complaint is that the police have abused the Public Order Act in order to ensure that the opposition political parties in Zambia, the political space is shrinked. Apart, apart from complaining, what that are you doing? That is number one. Yes. Number two, mm. in 2018, the members of parliament, mm. Honorable Garin Combo, raised the motion to refine the Public Order Act in Zambia. Mm. Are you aware that up to date, it's been almost two years plus the speaker has not brought up that issue, the motion to raise, to talk about the Public Order Act in Parliament. Mm. There are so many bills that, there are so many issues that our members of Parliament have raised in Parliament. I'll give an example. In 2018, our members, when the President abrogated the law by ensuring that the minister stayed in office, when the, the Constitution is correct, the, our ministers raised that issue. With the, with the member of the, the, the speaker, what has happened? From 2018, the impeachment motion has not taken place. So are you going to blame our 53 members of parliament that are not doing enough when there is a stumbling block? No. Let's be realistic. And the, the truth of the matter is our members of parliament have done justice to Zambia by ensuring first that the draconian law, which is the Bill 10, did not pass. Right. We should be proud of them. And we should thank them as Zambians that Mwabombeni. Because this law had it come to pass, would have seen you and I, if we retire tomorrow, not getting our benefit. You and I, if we die while we are in service, our children not benefiting from the sweat that we impacted in government. Right. Those were some of the issues. But the issue to do with the Public Order Act has been that in Parliament, Parliament itself has been a stumbling block because most of our MPs have raised these issues, but the Speaker, together working with the, the ruling MPs, have not given the opportunity to hear so that the Zambians can really know that right. the Public uh, public Order Act is a coronial law, is as good as it being a draconian law. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank Hankanga you. from the UPND. Uh, let's go to NAREP and, uh, of course, get your position regarding what Mr. Hankanga is from talking about the issue of uh, the Public Order Act. This is the one piece of law or legislation that has been with us for quite some time now, from 1955, somewhere there, until now, we've had uh, the unique uh, administration or regime, and then they left us again. We've had the MMD as well, they left the power. Today we've got the party front as well, uh, still in power, and of course, according to what we, we've been told, that they, even them, 
They are using the Public Order Act to suppress, to oppress people like you in the opposition. Apart from complaining as NAREP, one of the political parties in Zambia that has been existing for quite some time, what are you doing to ensure that these complaints are put to an end forthwith? Yeah, um, I may not be in the position and, um, to bring in exactly what mm. NAREP is doing right now, mm. but uh, I'll leave it to our spokesperson and our SG uh, one time to, to outline exactly what we are doing as NAREP. Of course, we have been in, uh, in talks uh, with uh, uh, the UPND and other uh, uh, political parties. Of course, as you may know, we, we are still in that alliance which uh, we, we created. Of course, uh, we have also, you know, we will be uh, engaged other, uh, you know, non-political uh, uh, organizations, okay, and uh, that uh, would uh, try to sit down with them and see how best we can be able to deal with this issue of Public Order Act. Of course, uh, NALEP is not exempted okay from you know uh, going through exactly what what uh, uh, UPND has been going through but it is higher time as Zambians we need to change you know our mindset and uh, begin to bring real issues on the table and the, and then this is what exactly under the leadership of uh, uh, Mr. Stephen Yarenda our president and this is what we are trying to do how best can we resolve this issue? Because for sure, I've been complaining, but nothing is being done. People have been going to the street, nothing is being done. Then there must be a problem somewhere. Okay, people have, you know, have been shot, dead, but nothing is happening. The, the question one should be able to ask is, what is it that we are going to do that uh, this thing should come to an end? One thing we can only do as Zambians, Time has come, 2021 has come, to put up a leadership, a leadership that has a will for this country, a leadership that is not selfish in looking only at themselves and those that surround them. Time has come as Zambians also, because sometimes, you know, as Zambians, we contribute to these fracases that go around us uh, because of how we do things. Two wrongs cannot make a right. We need to dialogue. We need to sit down and see what is it that we are going to do. So this is the time, together with my uh, colleague here, this is the time when we can leave all our political interests as individuals, because Zambia must be, uh, come first at heart. This is the time when uh, UPPZ or, or FDD and, uh, and, and other political parties, we need to put aside our personal interest and be able to put the interests of this country at hand. And then, once we put our heads together, then we'll be able to come up with something that is going to be productive for this country. Otherwise, we'll keep on, you know, complaining and talking about the, the Public Order Act, which we also, as NARE party, we are not excluded from it. Exactly, I agree with you. Uh, like what happened in Eastern Province, our president went there in Eastern Province. And he, he was supposed to have the, the, the rally there. And the Constitution, okay, uh, gives him the go-ahead uh, to, to be able to meet the people and to speak to the people. And when he did that, he was stopped not to go ahead with the rally. Reason being, because our president, Edgar Lungu, was in Eastern Province. And they felt to say, no, 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 no he cannot go ahead. So wh what are they scared of? They should not be scared. We should be able to meet together in this fighting field and be able to debate real issues. Mm. It is higher time as Zambians, as political parties, we need to begin to debate real issues, not personal attacks. Mm. We are not here as NARE to mention names, to call names, but we are here to talk about real issues. As Zambians, it is higher time. Uh, civil organizations, can we come together and talk about uh, real issues? And we need to put Zambia at heart first. In talking about the real issues, Mr. Chavala, as we move on, uh, let's talk about the issue of a job in Zambia. You didn't mention that 
in 20, speculated, I should make mention that in 2016, um, unemployment levels has increased to the high you know, levels that you can't really account. Yeah. If NAREP was to be voted in office today, uh, to be in government really, how would you create jobs? How would you reduce this you know, uh, problem we have of uh, employment in Zambia? Remember in 2011 we had the, the man himself, late Michael Chupia Sata, that came with a ban in terms of the message of job, you know, more jobs, more money in people's pockets, as well as lowering taxes. You know, today as we speak, uh, like you've mentioned on your own to say, people have no jobs. You know, we can further mention to say taxes have, have, have doubled or tripled. You know, something that we need to admit all of us here. All right. How best can you create jobs if NAREP was in power? I'll ask the same question to uh, the UPND. Apart from, I ask this question really, comrades, you need to understand me that, because what people want to know is that they will be, or choosing a political party which is going to be practical, while it's in power, not only a political party is going to be speaking rhetorics. What practical measures have you put in place to ensure that job is created if you form government come next year? You've got two minutes, I want to reduce the time. Thank you so much. Um, I want to make a mention of this, mm. uh, that uh, our president, uh, Mr. Stephen Yarenda himself, is a very business-minded person. Not only a business-minded person, but he is a person who has a heart for this country. And he has a will on how he is going to lead this country in all sectors. But I just want to, you know, just to mention a few. Of course, there are a lot. I think uh, we've been, uh, those that have been following our president, He's been articulating on how best he's going to reduce the levels of unemployment. Uh, I want to mention this, that uh, as we come into power as NAREP, we have put uh, the way on how we are going to operate Zambia is for Zambians. And Zambia can only be developed by Zambians. So first of all, we understand that, uh, you know, yes, our friends are, are, are trying to promote farming today. But how best are they doing it? They are not doing it accordingly because it's kind of like it's pante pante, you know, because you want just to get political marriage. But we have a plan on how we are going to support our local farmers to produce and manufacture from their products. Okay, I, I want, to, uh, I want uh, the nation to know that uh, Zambia, we, we do have cassava. As NAREP, we are going to make use of cassava, not only for food, but we are going to manufacture a lot of product from cassava. And, uh, no, uh, and, and that will create jobs. Not only that, but also we, we, we are going to uh, create a, a, a lot of uh, skill training centers. And we'll make sure that these skill, uh, skill training centers are decentralized in, in districts or provinces, like it is now. And we'll make sure that... Uh, will have and set up manufacturing companies in districts. Because I imagine if we were to go in, uh, in Monze right now, where there is a, we will set up a skills training center, mm. and someone from there uh, completes his, uh, his course. Should they come in Lusaka for them to find a job? No. They should be able to find a job exactly where they belong. And, and that is going to create a lot of jobs for youths countrywide. Are those things you are talking about going to be done only when you get to power, when, only when you get in government? You know, because like I've told you, we, are, we need to discuss practical issues. Yes. I ask this question once again because I know that um, your president, President Steve Nirenda, has been very consistent. Yes. For him, he believes that with or without going to, uh, to, to plot one. Mm -hmm. For him, is here to help the people of Zambia. Mm -hmm. All right? So are these issues you are bringing, can, are they, can it only be done when you get to power, or even now they can still be done? I, I want to make mention of uh, one of the projects that our president, together with us, mm. uh, he is doing this. He, it's called uh, 30 by 30. Yeah. Okay? Uh, NAREP mm. is not... Uh, uh, will not, it's, it's the party that is not going to work to be in power for it to begin changing the lives of Zambians. Mm. Our president uh, has already started uh, on the project called 30 by 30, where he has been moving uh, from provinces, from one province to the other. 
making sure that 30 by 30 strategy is, is being done and people are empowered, women are empowered, youths are empowered. Mm. And so we are doing that. This is the only party which is, uh, if you look at the ballot right now, in opposition, we are proud to say NAREP is the only party trying to make something even before it gets into power. What more when we get into power? Fantastic. Right. Thank you so much. Let's hear from uh, the UPND uh, member there. Uh, you've heard your colleague from NAREP there is bragging that for them they have already started implementing <laughs> what implementation, you know, yeah. Let's hear from you. Are these issues of just ambitions when you get to power or there is a track record that people can point at that now? Job creation from UPND. I think, I think we don't need to actually tell people, mm. but people have heard and have seen it. Mm. Haka Inde Hichilema is one of the Zambian biggest businessmen, mm. of which he has himself one of the biggest, largest employment base for young people in Zambia today. And he has done it at an individual capacity, of which the skills that he learned at school, he wants to translate it to Zambian. So Zambian lives can be bettered. He wants to improve our living standards. He's mentioned the issue to do farming. Farming is the key mm -hmm. to any country. The soil itself is mm -hmm. the key. He spoke about a better word, not this kind of chipante pante. Do you realize that the only president in Zambia that helped to improve the farming sector and up to date people are still bragging about bumper harvest was the late president Mike, uh, the late president uh, uh, Mwanawasa because Mwanawasa was a farmer he understood farming Haka Inde Hichilema is the Mwanawasa of this time because Haka Inde he's a farmer himself so agriculture will be one of our key employment basis for young people in Zambia today. Not just for young people, but for our parents as well. Because we are going to localize agriculture into districts and ensure that we do not just process maize, but add value addition of these products that will be produced in these districts. Value addition is a key point that will create employment, that will bring about the standard entrepreneurs that Zambia wants to see. We have the issues to do with education. Our president talks about free education because he is one of the beneficiaries of the free education during the Kaunda regime. And he emphasizes that the young people, if are given free education, they have got, they're given that right to learn and know how to ensure that. Because there are two types of employment. There is the formal and the informal sector of employment, of which the informal sector is the one that creates the largest number of employers. Because you are talking about agriculture. You are talking about people that are running this industrialization, which is one of the key things that this current government has missed, to industrialize Zambia so that we stop importing cooking oil. Fantastic. And I'm sure my question has been answered, Mr. Nkanga, but again, you. I'll start with you. Uh, I know that next year is going to be a very busy year politically, and uh, you are here complaining about the Public Order Act together with the National Restoration Party. I'll give you a minute. I'll try to steal maybe uh, four minutes from, uh, I hope the director will allow me that, but I've got, uh, should be four minutes to each one of you. Sure. Let's come to the preparation of next year's election. Uh, we've got the issue of COVID-19, and we're now living to what we call the new normal. Again, you are complaining about the Public Order Act, which we have today. Should this kind of uh, governance continue at next year? Should the COVID-19 continue next year? What methods have you put in place to ensure that your, pl your political party are flourish? I'll you give you an, that under a minute because I I'll give question. you an example. Yeah. The United States of America went through elections this particular year. Are you telling me that in the United States of America there was no COVID when they were campaigning? Mm -hmm. Why should Zambia be an exception when it comes to the campaigns and they want to use Public Order Act through the Corona uh, issue? Mm -hmm. We shall campaign to every Zambian. We shall reach out the message of the goodwill, a message of hope and help to every Zambian. Mm -hmm. And we shall ensure as much as we are campaigning to every Zambian that we shall observe the health guidelines. The simple part is to observe the health guidelines. And the police will not stand in our way 
to reach out to the Zambian and Hakka in the HDMI to reach out to his people to talk about the good message of hope. We shall campaign. And I want to urge Zambians out there that please, Sungani Ma Voters Card. Because in the end, it is the only thing that will liberate Zambia from its economic crisis that we are facing under the PF Patriotic Band government today. We use the voters card to ensure that we remove this dictatorial government that is here, that has messed our economy, that has messed our lives. It well, is the ballot. Let's hear from Mr. Chavala. I'm swapping the last question with you, Mr. Nkanga. I'm Thank coming you. back to you. Let's hear from Mr. Chavala. Should this kind of, you know, problems we have, the Public Order Act, the COVID-19 continue uh, to next year, what methods or measures have, have you put in place as NARIP to soldier on with your political party activities? Um, and a minute, I've got another question. For yes. Um, we are ready to mm. face any challenge that may come because um, we still have our country at heart. Uh, like my colleague mentioned, that uh, if America was able, not only America, in fact other more countries, you know, they, they, they are still campaigning even, up, even today, okay, because they, are, they want to choose a leader. So if that happens to Zambia, of course uh, we've seen the health department doing what it can to make sure that uh, we do not have bigger numbers of, uh, of the cases of COVID. So as, as, as NAREP, we've put everything in place and making sure that we tell our people to idea to uh, health rules and make sure that uh, we follow all the guidelines to protect not only we, the members of NAREP, but to protect our country from uh, you know, bigger numbers of death and also uh, bigger numbers uh, of COVID-19. So I think we are ready. And we are ready also uh, to make sure that our president, not only our president, but uh, councillors and members of parliament should be able to be on that ballot. Fantastic. I will start with Mr. Hankan. Under a minute, do you feel, I'll ask this uh, uh, personal sound question, you know, do you think or do you feel that NAREP or Mr. Chawala with the NAREP under Steve Nirenda is capable to govern this country better than HH. Do you feel so? As long as the ideologies. Do you f answer my question? Do you feel that Mr. Chawala and the NARIP and the President Stephen Nirenda is capable to preserve the affairs of this country correctly more than HH? I'll give you, a, I'll give you a practical example. Mm. I have not really paid attention to the ideologies of NARIP. So do you think, from where you stand now, do you think they are better off to more than UPN and the HH? That's what I've said. I've not paid attention to the ideologies of NAIP. So it would be difficult. So where do you put them? Where can you put them? They are political parties just like we are. Mm. So I've not paid much attention to the political ideologies, especially that there's a new president that has taken up. Mm. So now that you've asked me that question, next time when I come, Please ask me a question. I'll be able to give you an honest answer. So let me read through the ideologies of the president, the, uh, as, as Steve Nirenda, mm. what, the, what vision he has. Because currently, I can't tell what vision he carries for Zambia. So it would be difficult for me to whether say he's a good president because he's just been in a political scene for a few... But are you aware that NAREP is in the alliance with you? I am aware that NAREP is in alliance with mm. us, yes. But... I have mentioned the person that I knew mm. more because he was able to come and articulate a lot of issues mm. is Elias Chipimo, the president Elias Chipimo, right. the former president. He was able, but the current now president mm. has not been able to talk as much as Elias used to do to sell Fantastic. the ideologies. Let me go to Mr. Chavala. Do you, you think that Mr. Hanganga and the UPND and the president HH are better off to govern Zambia more than what Steve Nirenda and Narup can do? Um, I want to give an honest answer. Mm. Uh, because um, at a certain time, mm. I, I belong to UPND. Mm. And um, with uh, what is on the ground mm. and with what Mr. 
Stephen Jarenda has mm. for this country, I feel, and they need to be careful mm. because we are coming. I think Mr. Stephen Jarenda has the capacity than HH to be able to lead this country. Muntu ni mutima. That's what we say. Muntu ni mutima. Mutima onkala na bantu, mutima olo issues yanga nkale ni ovutix olo yalimba bwanji. But someone has need to have a heart to sit down and think why why are things moving in this way? And uh, for me, I feel maybe that's where the UPND needs to work out because they, they, most of the times they, over, they overreact on issues and they are too quick to respond to issues before they get to the bottom of, uh, the, of, of the story. And I feel for them, I feel I think they need to do more, especially on the mindset change as well as just trying to cool down and, and, and putting Zambia first at heart. So I feel that Mr. Steven Yorenda still has more chance than the UPND to be in the office 2021. Thank you so much, uh, gentlemen. Allow me to appreciate you for coming. We are not going to shake hands, but of course you can be able to greet each other just while it's there. So at, uh, a well, there's a new, <laughs> yes. <laughs> there's a new kind of greeting. Thank, Thank you. So Thank much. you. Thank you so much, Mr. Nkanga Omiya uh, from the UPND, and also Mr. Chavala from NARC. We appreciate you for coming. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. Thank you so much. Dear viewers, we end our discussion here. This has been Blunt Talk, the fearless debate. Standing in for Kelvin Tabulach Fogolo, who is and where I'm sure you'll be with him next week. Thank you so much. May God bless Zambia. May God bless Mother Africa. This is Innocent Theory IP. Good night. <laughs>